Okay, everybody, we're back. Hello, hello. So, uh, last period, we did uh, the solution where we did selection sort, and uh, we did it using indices and pop. So, that was good. Um, I just want to reiterate that this solution is not in place. In other words, we're creating, we're not actually uh, changing, right, uh, the original list. We're actually uh, creating a new list, in this case, uh, SL, sorted list. But the original list is still intact. Okay? So today, what I thought we could do is I could show you the solution to um, the same algorithm but it in place. So let's take a look at, uh, there's a really cool graphic actually on the internet on Wikipedia of all places, wouldn't you know? Uh, the most powerful repository of knowledge in the world and it's always accurate. So uh, if we come down here on Wikipedia, there's a graphic here on the right, and I've just searched selection sort. You can see here Wikipedia selection sort. Let's, let's take a look at this animated graphic. What's it doing? So it's about to restart again from the beginning, and here it goes. So it finds the lowest one and puts it at the top. But it doesn't iterate from the beginning again. You notice? It iterates from the next one in the list. So really, it looks like it's kind of iterating over the whole thing, but then it's also iterating over smaller subsets ever decreasing, going down. And when it finds the smallest one, it puts it at the top. In fact, not only does it put it at the top, but interestingly, I, don't, I can't pause this animation, but if you look closely, it not only puts it at the top, but obviously, if it's in place, you can't delete any numbers or any items. So it's actually swapping um, the number at the top with the lowest number. So let's start again here. The lowest number is zero. Notice it swaps it with the eight. So the top one's five. Now the five goes where the one was. It's so fast, you have to kind of watch this in slow-mo. Um, and on YouTube, you can do that. But it's, it almost, you don't, you don't quite notice it, but it is actually swapping. Because all the numbers still have to remain in the list. So let's try and slow this down with a diagram. Let's pick, uh, let's pick some numbers here. Let's go, you know, eight. Uh, four, three, six, and then, I don't know, five. Okay, so what it does is, in this selection sort, so this is now an in-place selection sort, okay, uh, but we'll call it in-place. Now, it actually uh, starts here, right? And it says that, you know, the, the minimum number, the smallest one, is eight. And then it goes through and starts searching. And it finds the three. And now that one becomes the minimum. And of course, that is the smallest one. But now, interestingly, what it does is it swaps the 8 and the 3. So what you end up having, maybe I should have written this over on this side. Um, I'll just kind of erase this here because I'm going to go f to the right. Um, so what you now end up having, happening is you end up having 3, 4, 8, 6, 5. Notice the 3 and the 8 got swapped. Okay, now it's still iterating, but this time, it's not going to start at the 3. 
okay? Uh, it's going to start at the four. Now, it goes through and it finds the smallest one. It has to go all the way to the bottom. It doesn't know four is the smallest one, but it is. So now, you could think of it as it swaps it with itself, but in effect, it does nothing, right? So if you swap the four, um, th there's nothing to swap it with because it's, it, it's in the right place, right? Um, then let's go again. So now, uh, the next one, so let's, we'll just kind of copy this over again. Then now it starts iterating here. Notice each time it iterates, it starts iterating at a different location, right? So it doesn't have to go through the whole thing again. Now it says, okay, we're at this location. Let's go and find the smallest one starting from below that line. And the smallest one is five. So then it swaps the five and the eight. So we end up with three, four, five, six, eight. Okay, so let's, I mean, I'm gonna, the one thing though that you kind of don't know yet is how to swap locations in a list. How do you do that? Because, oh gosh, if you, if you think of, let's say for example, if you say um, L equals uh, four comma five, now here are the indices, right? How do you swap the four and the five? Do you say L uh, zero equals L one? Now if you do that, guess what's going to be in L? You're gonna have a five here and a five here. Now you've lost the four. You don't, you've actually literally lost it, so you can't actually get it back. So this isn't going to work. Um, oops, gosh, this is a really annoying, this pen is so sensitive. Um, another way to do this, okay, maybe I need to kind of, yeah, you can see everything now. Another way to do this, the, the classic way of swapping variables is to use a temporary variable. So you could say uh, temp, equals L uh, zero. And then you would say L zero equals L one. And then you would say uh, L one equals, what do you think? Do you know the answer? Yeah, hopefully you're able to figure that out. It's the one that you temporarily stored. So if you think about this, right, if we start with here, the first line, here let's put the variables down, temp would be L0, which is a four. Then L0 becomes L1, and L1 is a five. And then the last line, L1 becomes temp and temp is a four. Now, you can see that in order from zero to one, the list is five, four instead of four, five. So this does, in fact, work. And this is the classic way in most programming languages to swap two variables. However, Python has a very cool uh, feature, okay? You can actually swap them like this in Python. It, it's actually, it's called multiple assignment. And it, 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 it works perfectly. So it would be like this. You'd say L0 comma L1 equals L1 comma L0. And what you're doing is you're assigning multiple items on one line and it happens all at the same time without, without having this issue that we had before of where we lose 
track of one variable. And let me show you how this actually works. So if I was to actually um, you know, test it out, if I said uh, L is equal to 4 comma 5, and then I said L 0, oops, oh, yeah, comma L 1 is equal to L 1 comma L 0. If I did that, now look what's in L. It's, it's flipped. Th those two items are swapped. So that works. But, I mean, that works in Python. Some other languages might not have that. But nonetheless, uh, the classic method of using a temporary variable also is uh, using this method here. This also works. OK? Um, OK, so now that we've kind of gone over how to um, swap, try and implement or write a selection sort algorithm in place. OK? Once again, my suggestion if you have trouble with this is go back and look at this graphic of how it does it in place. And, and I'll give you another hint too. It's, you're going to have to have a nested loop in order to do this. So one loop in another loop. But notice that the loop, the outer loop is going to iterate over everything, but the inside loop is not going to iterate over everything. In fact, the inside loop gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it cl gets closer to the end. So give it a shot and um, don't be, this is, might be a little challenging, so don't, be, um, don't feel bad if, you, if you're not able to get this. But try it anyways, okay? Pause the video. All right, we're back. So let's take a look at how we solve this. Um, like I said, the one thing you got to get used to is this is a double loop or a nested loop. Let's just try and print out the numbers in a list. First of all, let's create the list. So let's go um, L equals list. Now, let's just get, uh, for example, 20 numbers. And um, let's, we're going to have to import random because we want to shuffle this stuff to make it uh, unordered. And then let's go, uh, let's go uh, L dot shuffle. And um, let's just go print L just to see if that's working. So let's run that. Oops. Um, oh yeah, oh my goodness. It's, my brain's not working again. It's random.shuffle. And then we'll go L. And let's run that. Okay. Um, so yeah, that looks good. There's 20 numbers from 0 to 19, and they're shuffled. Perfect. So we're going to have to order these. So um, before I do this, though, before I shuffle it, so before I even call shuffle, let's actually call this function uh, cell selection sort in place cell sort IP or cell sort and let's pass let's pass uh, a list to it and let's call it here okay and in here instead of actually you know sorting it right now let's just see if we can do this 
nested loop. So I'll say for x in range len l. And now I'm going to have to have a nested loop. Now I'm going to say um, for y in range. And so now this is interesting because I don't want to start at the beginning. I want to start. Um, so if I can show you the, the graphic again. So every time it goes down one more, right? If you look here, so think of the yellow thing here, right? So those are done. So it always starts here. And then it starts here. And then it starts here. So we're actually iterating not through the whole thing on the second loop, but down. So therefore, the first argument of range is going to be x. So if you understand that, that's quite a lot. So let, let's now just try going printing. Um, and let's try going, uh, let's try printing ly. Um, and then, well, actually, let's, let's do this. Um, comma, end, so that we can see the difference, right, in each iteration. So after this is finished, let's go back and let's put a print statement here. Okay, yeah, um, duh, I forgot the def. Thank you to my students who pointed that out to me. So, um, but when I run this, it looks not great. And the reason why it doesn't is because I've got two digit numbers and I don't want that. So let's fix this and let's just go uh, range 10. So that'll be 0 to 9. So then that, that'll be one digit numbers. Now that looks good. You see 0 to 9 and it iterates every time less and less and less and less. That's exactly the concept that I want. So now let's go back to it and let's say, OK, so now that we've done that, well, what should I do? Well, what I want to do is I want to find the smallest one. But I want to find the smallest one and swap it with the first one. So I'm going to say here that the mindex, OK, the minimum index is equal to x. That's the first one here, OK? Now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say um, if L, the same algorithm I used before, if Ly is less than L mindex, then um, then swap them. No, 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 I have to store it because I don't know if that's the one because I have to get to the bottom first. So I'll say mindex equals uh, y. Now, once I am finished the loop, once I am finished the loop, now I will swap them because now I know the new mindex, the new minimum index. So in order to swap them, I'll say uh, the first one, which is LX, comma, L mindex is equal to L mindex comma LX because the X is from the loop from the outside loop right and I'm assuming here the smallest one is the first one assume smallest is first 
Obviously, it, it might not be. It's probably not. But um, let's see if this works. Ready? Let's run it. And that doesn't work. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm just printing them. I didn't... Did I print L after shuffling it? Uh, hold on. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so... No, wait a minute. Um, I did print L after shuffling it. Oh, I'm not sorting it after... Gosh. Okay, hold on. Uh, control X, Control V. Okay, there we go. First we shuffle, then we sort. That's better. Yay! It works. Okay. So, in this case, um, it's, it's working out. So we get 0 to 9, and so that's the solution. Um, the printing, yeah, that's not, we, you know what we could do is we should actually put, we could like take this line out just to see how it's ha all happening, right? And say print L right here after each iteration. That might look better. Let's try it. So you could see, so in this case, yeah, so it actually starts out with the zero. That's unfortunate. Let's try it again. Oh. Oh, that's because the first one has already happened. Right. Okay, so that, so in order to therefore see that, we have to print L before shuffling or before sorting it. So let's try it again. There. So now it finds the zero, it takes the zero, puts it at the beginning, and, and it swaps it with the two. Next, it finds the smallest one, obviously, which is one, and it swaps it with the four. So now the four goes to the end. Okay? So you can see the algorithm actually working in front of your eyes in that graphic right there. Pretty cool. So this is actually called an in-place selection sort. It's actually not creating a new one. And um, it's not, notice also that this function is not returning anything. We're not, we're not dealing with a local L because we don't have L equals in the function. And so it's actually working on the global L. So that's perfect. Okay? So that's the solution to the selection sort in place. Okay, so the next topic we're going to cover uh, is going to be two-dimensional lists. So it's basically a list within a list. So if I create a list, right, and then what I do is I create another list inside of, okay, first I gotta go equals. And then I say, okay, we have a list inside of a list. And then I say, well, I could have one, two, three. And then I could have, there's, there's my first list. And now my second list, uh, four, five, six. And then my third list, uh, okay, I could go, seven eight nine and of course it needs like that now what we need to understand is how do we access these elements inside so in order to do this it probably is best if I use the whiteboard here and let's clear this out um, so in essence um, we have one, two, three, okay, and this is all in so now this lit this list is the first one, the second one, and the third one, 
But inside each one is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Therefore, if you think about it, how would we, if this is L, how would we pull out the 5? Well, that's L. So the first one is this one. It's the top one, L1. And then the second one is the bottom one, the inside one. It's not comma one, as you might think. It's not. It's actually like that. So if we go back and we say, what is L1, 1, we get the 5. OK? And so therefore, ask yourself, what would the 7 be? What's this one? What's the 7? Well, you should be able to figure this out, right? It's, it's the big lists inside first, so it's 2. And then what? Obviously, 0, right? So give it a shot. L, 2, 0. And there's the 7. So that's how you, that's how you access them. Um, but how about creating them? How about creating them? So let's try that. So for example, um, I mean, I created it here. You can see how I created it. But how would you create it in a, in a list? Or program, program, programmatically? So in, in essence, what I would do is I would say, OK, well, let's, let's create a new list. Let's say it's A, and let's call it uh, you know, no, nothing inside of it. Now, um, let me, so this is actually going to be like a double, uh, a nested loop again. So I could say for x in range, and let's put, how about we put three things in there, three lists inside, OK? And um, now I'm going to say, I'm going to create a small list, OK? little a, I'm going to put those little a's in the big A. So now I would say for y in range, um, and I could say, oh wait, I didn't import any, I didn't import random here. So, um, hmm. OK. Um, well, I could. I could just use, let's say, y, I suppose. Um, so I'll have to change this a little bit, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same numbers. So how about I do it again? And then here, let's, let's try this again. Import random. OK. And it's all gone. OK. For x in range. Um, 3, and then a equals blank for y in range. And now we could say 4, for example. And then we will go a dot append. And then, um, let's make this slightly bigger. And then we could say uh, random dot rand range. Let's how about let's just go you know um, zero to ten, and then done. And now here's the interesting thing, is that. Once you are completed that inside loop, now you have to append, and this is the cool part, you have to append to the big A, the little a. So in other words, in this inside loop, you finished appending to little a, because little a was nothing at first. But you've put four numbers in. Then 
you're going to append that little list into the big list. And so now when you're done this, look what we have for A. Okay? So pr that's the way to create it with a nested loop, uh, a double. So if you wanted to, you know, iterate over them as well, it's, it's a very similar type of situation. So if I said um, for x in range. Now here's the interesting thing. You have to be careful here because think about this for a second. Um, how many things, how many lists are in the big list? Three. So I would say len a, okay, then I would say for y in range. Now this is not going to be len a anymore. This is now going to be len of what? Big A X. You see, it's the it's the it's the inside guy now. So think about this. This is this here is A zero, right? This is A one, big A one. Okay? This is big A two. So now now I can go print um, a x, no, no comma there, y, and then I'll put the comma and I'll say end equals, just so that it all prints out on the same line. And then, once I've finished the inside loop, okay, then I'll go print so that the next um, time it iterates through, the next list will print on the next line. And so when I run this, notice I get 1781, 1781, 0519, 0519, and then 3308, 3308. Okay? So in essence, now I've shown you two different aspects of a two-dimensional list. This was how we created it. And then this is how we iterated through it. Okay? Um, so, what I'd like you to do is a little exercise in, in this so that you get a little bit of experience with it. Create a program that will generate um, 10 lists inside a big list with uh, 20 numbers in each one. So 20 numbers inside the inside lists, but 10 lists inside the big list. And then what I want you to do is create another list. And by the way, those are all random numbers. Okay, let's make let's make them random numbers uh, between, you know, 0 and 99, so that they're like less, not three digits. And then what I want you to do is create a function that will add all the numbers in each list, and then create a list that will uh, have all the sums of the lists for the correct indices. So in other words, if I kind of show you in a graphic. Uh, let's say I went, um, you know, let's discard this. <clears throat> I'll just kind of like do a simple example. Um, if I went, you know, let's do the 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, then I'm going to make a, another, so I've created this, right? But now I'm going to make another list that has the sums 3, 7, and 11. So two plus, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 
is 7 and 5 plus 6 is 11. But all these are randomly generated, right? And instead of having 2 in here, we have uh, 20 numbers in here in instead of 2. And instead of having just uh, 3 lists, we've got uh, 10 lists inside the big list. All right? So, uh, and oh, and the numbers obviously are from uh, 0 to 99. Okay, so uh, give it a shot. All right, pause the video now. Okay, so we're back. And so here's the solution uh, to the problem. I just uh, imported, I just imported random and then I made a function called list sum. By the way, you don't have to make the list sum function because there's a built-in function it's called sum inside of Python that does this for you. So, but it's good practice. Um, for num and l, total equals total plus num, return total when the loop. So it's going through the list, adding them all up and returning the total. I create an empty list here in the beginning of the program. And instead of doing uh, 10 and 20, I did 10 and I put three numbers in each so that it's, it's easier just to visually look at it and see if the sums are correct. And um, I'm creating an empty inside list. And then I append to the inside little list a random number between uh, 0 and 9. And then once I create the inside list, I append the inside list to the big outside list. And then I, I'm creating a new list again called the sums. And um, don't use the word sum, by the way, because sum is a built-in function. So you notice it changes color when you do that. So um, for L, so little L and big L, so the little lists in the big list, sums.append list sum L. And list sum is the function I wrote up here. And then after I'm all done creating the sums list, then I print out everything and I print out the inside lists and their sums. So if I run it, you can tell the sums are on the right, the inside lists are on the left, and they do, in fact, have the correct sum. But what's neat, though, is that I can access the sums with the same index. So notice the sums index is x, which is the same index as the, so kind of like I have two parallel uh, lists and their sums are in the same location index-wise. So that's convenient. Um, so that's kind of the end of uh, that solution. Hope you got something similar to it. So the other example that I wanted to show you guys is not just with numbers, but you can also um, create a list of strings. So if I say s is the big strings list, and I had, let's say for example, uh, a list of strings like this, if I said um, hello, goodbye, and you know, see ya. Uh, What's up? So in this case, th it doesn't seem like it's a, a two-dimensional. It's a, it's a, it's a one-dimensional list. But what's interesting about this is that the strings themselves are iterable. So in other words, let's say, for example, if you wanted to say, what is S0? Yeah, that's hello. OK, what about? S01, which is the second letter, right? So that's the E from hello. So in essence, even though I don't have a two-dimensional list, I have a two-dimensional iterable. So I can iterate right, over lists, and I can iterate over strings. So if I wanted to pull every letter out of this, I would say for 
um, s in s, so for the strings in the big string list, then I could say uh, for letter in, in the small list, which is, uh, sorry, not list. S, the little s is for strings, okay? So how about I, how about I change this then? How about I go for, uh, I don't want to go str. How about, let's go for, yeah, let's go, yeah, let's just do that. For letter in string, and now we could say print uh, letter. And if we run that, obviously we get all the letters. It doesn't look great because they're all one after the other. So I can fix it simply by going, um, I could put a print statement here. And that would do that, but that still doesn't look great. I can fix it again by doing this. Right there, and so in essence, I'm printing I'm printing one letter at a time. Right. Um, you know, what would be different than just going for string in s, print string? Essentially, that's what I have done. Right. Um, but what's kind of cool here is watch this. Oops. You see? So I'm just showing you how you can use a nested loop to iterate over a list of strings. The strings are iterable, and so is the list. OK? Other cool things you might be able to do with this, right, is you could take, for example, um, slices of the strings. You can also take slices of lists too. So, you know, if I go back to L, um, was it, did I have A? Yeah, I had L, A, and I had big S. Um, I could say something like, um, give me the, print out the last element from each of these things. So I could say for you know, um, I in L print uh, I negative one. And so there I'd get the three, the six, and the nine. If I did that again, except instead of saying L, I did A, I'd get the same thing, right? The 1, the 9, and the 8. If I did the same thing, except with an S, oops, it still works. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I deleted the um, this guy accidentally. There. And so, yeah, the O, the E, the A, and the P. So stuff like that uh, is good to know. Um, so, okay, so the next topic I wanted to go over with you is tuples. And a tuple is basically the same thing as a list, except instead of using square brackets, we use round brackets, okay? And it's exactly like a list, except it's immutable. In other words, once you make it just like a string, you cannot change it. So therefore, we cannot do append. Okay, tuple object has no attribute append. We cannot do remove. OK, 
okay uh, you cannot do insert okay you can do all those things with a regular list because it's mutable you can change a regular list but when you use the when you don't use the square brackets when you use the just the round brackets it becomes a tuple and so therefore once you make it you cannot change it it's just like a string you might think okay well what's the purpose behind this well um, you'll see that when we get into the next topic which is going to be dictionaries that sometimes we need to use containers that are immutable like strings and tuples okay um, so in essence you know a tuple you already know everything about a tuple you can iterate through a tuple just like you can iterate for x in t print x so you can iterate over a tuple just like a list it's, it behaves exactly like a list in every way, except you cannot change anything in it. So once it's made, that's it. Once you make a tuple, it's done. You can't change it. If you want to change it, you have to recreate it. So if I wanted to change this tuple, I'd have to remake it um, like that. And so now it's changed, but I didn't really change it. I just made a new one. Okay, just like a string. If I make a string, then I cannot change anything in the string. I have to recreate it if I want to create a new one, if I have a, want to have a new one. So that's the concept of a tuple. It's very straightforward, and uh, it's in the textbook, as uh, the definitions in the textbook as well. Okay, so we're back. All right, well, we kind of have to move a little quickly here because of the schedule we're on. So we're going to move into uh, dictionaries. And that's right, you heard me right. Dictionary. And a dictionary in Python is not a regular type of a dictionary you would think of in English. It's not like a definition of words. Rather, a dictionary is a container. And a list is a container, OK? But a dictionary is very unique and powerful in a very in a very special way. So what it is is a it's a storage of key value pairs. So it's like pairs of information. Okay? So the way you would make it is you would say d equals and remember the brackets are very important in Python and a dictionary uses curly braces. So they're kind of, if you find them on your keyboard, they're the shift for the square braces. Okay, So square braces, a list, round braces, a tuple, and curly braces, a dictionary. But a dictionary doesn't take individual values. It takes pairs of values. So for example, I could say something like 1, and then the pair is separated by a full colon. And then I could say, for example, A. And so that's a pair right there. OK? Um, I could do another one. I could say 4. And I could say another pair, something like uh, B. Oops, I messed up there. OK? I could have another one, let's say 8 and Z. Oops, I messed up again. I'm getting tired. OK, so there is a dictionary. Now, you can't, there's no indices in a dictionary. So there's no 0, 1, 2, 3. OK? And I have to kind of go to my whiteboard here to explain this in a little bit more. So. Oops. Um, so in our example here, we have one a comma. I think we had uh, what was it? 
four B eight Z. Four B eight and then Z. Uh, so this, these the first items are called the keys. Okay? And the second items in those pairs are called the values. So essentially they're key value pairs. And there is no 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no indices. No indices. OK? Uh, so, so I can't iterate through this going you know, for x in range, blah, blah, blah. That's, I can't iterate through it like that. In fact, when you add things, and I'll show you how to add things to a, to a dictionary in a, in a minute, um, they're not ordered in any particular way at least a regular dictionary. Okay? Uh, I think in later versions of Python they started having ordered dictionaries, but um, in order to understand dictionary, I think it's important to say, all right, you don't, you don't have to have order to it. So what's the purpose of it? Well, the purpose of it is to look up the value based on the key. So if I said, now in this example, it doesn't really make sense, but I'll, I'll do a better one in a minute. If I said, give me the value of the key to 1, that's going to give me 8. Give me the value of the key of 8, that's going to give me z. And essentially, that's what the, that's the purpose of a dictionary, is to do a lookup. And that's why it's called a dictionary. If you think about it, what, a regular English dictionary, what, what do you use it for? Well, you, you use it to look up the definition of a word. Well, think of the word in a regular dictionary as the key, and the value is the definition. There's a pair of information there, right? So, I mean, a better example here would be is if I did something like this. If I went D equals... Uh, Mary, and then I said uh, her number is, uh, let's say, something like, uh, or how about, how about I just go with ages here, right? Mary's 22. Uh, and then I said Bill, well, he's 13 years old. And then I went, um, let's say, Doug. Yeah, he's, he's really old. He's 33. OK, so in this case, oops, I messed up. What did I mess up? Uh, Mary, 22, Bill, 13, Doug, 33. Oh, the brackets. I'm using the wrong brackets. Yeah. OK. So there's a good. <laughs> I'm using list brackets on a dictionary. OK, so now um, there you go. So that's my dictionary. Now you might say, all right, well, uh, how old is Doug? And you would say, to, look, to do a lookup, you'd go D uh, Doug. Notice to do the lookups though you're using square brackets, not curly braces. Okay. So now, how do you add stuff to the? Let's say I want to, you don't use append, so you'd go D, and you'd go John for another name. So the key goes in there, and then the value is that comes after the equal sign. John is 19. Okay. Now if I look at the dictionary. Notice John does not get put at the end. Once again, there's no order that is specific to the dictionary. So 
you might say, well, is, is it possible to iterate through the dictionary? And the answer is yes. You could go for key for k in uh, d.keys. And this used to be, this used to work. Let's just see if this works. Print k. Yeah, this, okay, this works. So, dot keys will give you all the keys. Okay? Now, if you wanted to print out the, the values too, then you could go like this. Print k, and then you'd go, comma, dk. And dk is going to look up all the values for you. And so you say, oh, Mary's 22, Bill is 13, Doug's 33, and John's 19. So in this way, you're doing a lookup for every one. OK? And um, actually, there's a way of iterating through both. And, and this is kind of cool. I think it goes for k, comma, v, for key and value in d dot items print k comma v and there you go it does the same thing so items returns a tuple so all of those are tuples so if i was to go like if i go d dot items look what it returns notice it's it's a list of tuples right so when you go You've never seen this before, but this is actually unpacking the tuple for k comma v. So, um, what are some of the what's some of the what's the purpose of this dictionary? Well, the purpose is if you it's basically a database. If you had a huge amount of information, just think if it was put in a list. Now you have to kind of check each and every item in a list. A dictionary doesn't work that way. The, the lookup, finding the, the value in a key value pair is very fast in a dictionary, even when you have millions of entries in the dictionary. So its performance is amazing in that respect. Um, in addition, it's really convenient when you want to store pairs of information. Um, a dictionary is really cool that way. Um, but there is one restriction. And the restriction is, so the value can be anything, but the key has to be immutable. Now, what that means is that the values can be lists, but the keys cannot be lists because lists are mutable. And as I promised you earlier, now, if you need, now this is a situation where you could need to use a tuple. So for example, I could make another um, dictionary and I could say, oops, like that. I could make it DD and that's a empty dictionary. And now if I wanted to add stuff to it, I would go DD and now let's put a tuple in here. And let's go uh, one, two. And now I could say that's equal to something like, um, I, I could make it a string. You know, A string is fine, too. By the way, that's a tuple. And, and uh, you know, OK, fine, that works. They could both be immutable. Or I could go like this, um, and I can make this a list. That's fine, too. That works, OK? But watch what, what happens when I do this, when I try and make the key a dictionary. So something mutable. It says, uh-oh. You can't have the key be mutable. You can't have the key be a uh, a list. Now the key can be a string too, by the way.
Okay, so that's fine. Um, the one other thing that you need to know about dictionaries is the keys must be unique. So you can't have duplicates. In other words, here, let's go back to the original one, right? Let's put in Mary again. Notice Mary's in there already. Let's go D. Ma it's a string, so I'll go Mary. And I'll say she's not 22. Mary's actually only uh, 10 years old. Now let's see what's in the dictionary. Notice that I don't have two Marys, 122 and 110. I have only one Mary and it's the last one. So in, if I, in, in essence, you cannot have duplicates, duplicate keys. Can, question, can you have duplicate values? And the answer is yes. Watch this. So if I added another one, let's say um, Mike, and I made Mike 10 years old as well, that's OK. Notice Mary is 10 and Mike is 10. So you can have duplicate values, but you cannot have duplicate keys. The keys must be unique. Okay?